Today should be interesting. There is a series of amplifiers out there that are extremely popular among many metal musicians and considered legendary that I have never liked. And today, I'm gonna to revisit the one that I've liked the least out of all of them. Let's do it. All right guys, hope you're doing great out there today. If this is your first time here at my channel, my name is Kyle and I don't know what I'm doing with my hands right now. What I do here is I take all sorts of awesome high gain related guitar equipment, I record it with a simple setup and I give you the unprocessed audio on your end. So if you're into E-standard thrash riffs, dropsy hardcore riffs, and dudes with sciatic issues at 35 years old, you're in the right place. Consider hitting the like button and subscribing on the way out so you don't miss any more of my stuff. Thanks. So as mentioned in the introduction of this video, I am a total amp nerd. If you've ever been around my channel, you know that I just love amplifiers. If it makes crunchy, clangy noises or does the high gain chugga chugga thing, then more than likely I have owned it at some point or I intend to own it in the near future. But way back at the beginning of this amp testing, hoarding, mental problem that I developed, one of the first amplifiers that was on my list to try as a high gain metal and hardcore player was the dual rectifier. And again, if you've been around my channel at all, you will know that I started out on this channel not liking them. And this channel is not that old. We're about two and a half years in, guys. So a little less than two and a half years ago, I did not like rectifiers whatsoever. I loved other people's tones when I heard them play them live. But for me, whenever I would play through them, the, just, the feel was not there. I just couldn't get them to tighten up the way that I liked. The mids were not in a place that I liked. It was either too fat and broad or it was too scooped. And yeah, no matter what I tried to do to those things, I could just never get them to work for me. I mean, I literally have put them through every guitar cab, uh, all sorts of different overdrives, different guitars. And every time I would bring one in the house, I literally just wanted to yeet it back out the door because I was so frustrated knowing that they were capable of good tones, but me not being able to get them out of the amplifier. But along the way, something clicked. I bought a dual rectifier multi-watt a little over two years ago, and that thing just, for some reason, something clicked with that amp but it wasn't just that amp because ever since I got that amp and fell in love with it, like every rectifier that I've tried since, save for maybe a couple of the three channels that I've gotten in here, uh, I have fallen in love with. Like they have become one of my favorite amplifiers within the top five. And that's kind of saying something considering two years ago, I didn't like them at all. They weren't even an amp that I was interested in owning. But one thing that you should know if you don't already about the dual rectifier series or the rectifier series in general is there are a million of these things. There are so many amps that fall under that rectifier name and that rectifier series. And some of them vary wildly. There are a couple of goofy ones like the Blue Angel and the Maverick that like are not high gain amps at all. And then on the newer side, you've got the Badlander, which is just a way, way more modern, way more mid forward amp than any of the traditional rectifiers. But even if you set all of those aside within the traditional rectifier model, there are still a ton of different models out there and all of them kind of vary, not only in features, but they vary quite a bit in the sound. And one of the amps that I was really excited to try for no other reason than the aesthetic, because I think it looks badass, the Roadster. Now, if you guys are unfamiliar with the Roadster model, it was essentially a four channel version of the three channel amp. They added an additional channel here that was kind of like dedicated to your crunchy tones, whereas the original three channel rectifiers, you had the green, the orange, and the red. The orange and the red were both pretty high gain channels for the most part, unless you were on the raw setting but they didn't really sound that great for the classic rock stuff in my opinion. And then the green channel, you could get classic rock stuff out of, but then you had to sacrifice that green, sacrifice that green channel in order to get those crunchy tones, you would not be able to get your clean tones. So with the Roadster, they give you a separate green channel, they give you a yellow channel, which is kind of dedicated to, again, the crunchy stuff, and then you get your traditional high gain channels. So this thing also features some cool stuff like half power switching, and that's before uh, the multi-watt series came along and then you get individual reverb controls on this as well So as far as features go, I mean this thing was packed uh, They put a lot of stuff into this amplifier 
As far as the tonal differences, everybody said that this was essentially the three channel rectifier voicing, but maybe slightly darker on the high gain settings. And when I got it, I wasn't really that surprised in that I did not like the amp at all. Now, the first Roadster I got was probably six, seven years ago. It was quite a while. And I had revisited it once in between. I picked up another one at some point just to turn around as part of a package deal and felt the same way about it then. But then comes this one right here that I got from my buddy, Joe Balliger of Balliger Guitars. And I really didn't expect to like it. In fact, when I got it, I didn't even plug it in right away. I let it sit for a while and I kind of got curious and I went ahead and plugged it into a cabinet. And yeah, uh, let's just say that I no longer feel the way that I used to about it. This thing is big and open and this one in particular just a little bit tighter a little bit more percussive on the low end it's got a nice sizzle up top it's everything that i love about you know every other rectifier that sounds good to my ear i think that this amp is an incredible version of the rectifier that is criminally underrated somebody actually said that on one of my posts where i posted a picture of this they were like the roadster is criminally underrated in the dual rectifier lineup and i honestly couldn't agree more for the features that you get in this amplifier and it basically being the traditional rectifier tone and the fact that you can typically find these for less than you can find a regular two channel or three channel dual rectifier. I mean, the prices on them have kind of started to finally come up. For a while they were selling for 1100 bucks, 1200 bucks. Now they're up around the $1,600 range, but still multi-watts are gonna cost you 16 to $1,800 on the used market. I mean, you essentially are getting what you get in the multi-watt, but more with this. So awesome amplifier. Sad fact of the matter is I have so many rectifiers. Somebody made me an offer on this one, so I'm gonna let it go. I do really like it and playing through it, which is what we're gonna do here in a second, is gonna make me very sad because this particular one sounds really good. And especially with Mesa's, I have found that amps of the same model can vary wildly in sound, more so than any other brand. It's just, I don't know if it's because there's so many components inside these things that the tolerances really just kind of create different beasts depending on how far off they are. I don't know what it is, but all I know is that this one sounds great and I'm sad to let it go because the next one that I grab may not sound as good as this, but I have too many rectifiers. First world problems to the max, but let's go ahead and plug this in and check this out. Let's do it. All right, guys, so we have the Roadster hooked up through my Soldano front-loaded cab. This cabinet has vintage 30s and K100s and an X pattern, and it is front-loaded, which means that it's gonna be more directional, more focused, more punchy, and that's exactly why I like this cab with rectifiers in general, because it just tightens them up. It makes that low end more percussive without having to do too much work to the front end. And we are micing the K100. Not 100% sure how it's gonna sound on your guys' end, because I don't mic K100s very often, even though they are one of my favorite speakers, so it might sound a little different. But in the future, we are gonna do one of my regular dedicated playthrough videos of this amplifier on the Mesa cabinet with the Duncan Distortion, but today I just wanted to have a little fun with it, which is why I'm using this guitar, a guitar that I do not play very often here on the channel, but it is one of my favorites. This is a faded Les Paul Studio, um, and it has the Duncan Alpha Omega pickups in it. This is actually the guitar that I use to record my band Bushido Coats album because it's just a really, really great sounding guitar. We've got a couple of sort of boosts over here on the side. Currently, we are using the MXR M77 Badass Modified Overdrive because this boost really tailors the low end on the rectifiers nicely. So here's what we got. We're on the red channel. <laughs> So right off the bat, this thing sounds great. Um, I do want to get, let's get a little bit more volume. A little more bass, a little more low end. <laughs> Ah, 
yes, dude, it sounds really, really good. I am definitely happy with the tones that we're getting. Let's pull that treble back maybe just a tad. And again, we are on the vintage setting. I'm gonna bump that gain up just a little bit more and just a little bit more low end. And then we'll go over to the modern setting. <laughs> Forgot the riff halfway through, but that's okay. Sounds great like this, but let's go ahead, let's go over to the modern setting. This is gonna give us more scoop mids, more low end, and it's gonna give us more volume too. Now on the modern setting on these, I like to put the treble at zero because it brings the mids forward. <laughs> And then to adjust for that, you just have to bump the presence up. So yeah, that is all on the red channel. Let's go over to the orange channel real quick, which is basically gonna be similar. There's just a difference in the negative feedback circuit. So now we are on the orange channel and on this channel, there's not, I forget exactly what it is, but the negative feedback circuit basically isn't doing as much to the aggressiveness of this channel. So it's not gonna be nearly as bright. So we can't do the treble at zero trick on this channel. And overall, it's gonna sound a little bit darker. We're on the modern mode again. So sounds good, let's go over to the vintage mode. And now we do have the treble at zero and we're gonna play it like that on this channel. <laughs> So not as full, it's a little darker, a little rounder. The mids are more forward on the vintage overall, but definitely seems to be lacking that low end response. The red channel is where I just seem to really feel like everything comes together on this amp particularly. That's where I live when I'm playing this amp. But before we end the demo real quick, let's go over to channel two, because this really is the truly unique part about this amp. And we're switching over to my heritage guitar with the Duncan Antiquities because it's a little bit more traditional. It'll give us that classic rock and roll vibe a little bit more. All right, so we're hitting channel two with a Tube Screamer. <laughs> So as you can see, much more open in the top end, much more chimey. It's got great mids. I, I really think that this channel does great for the classic rock. If you're trying to get the dad rock riffs out, uh, it's one of the only rectifiers that does that stuff particularly well, in my opinion. The other ones can definitely do it, but I just love the open top end and the chiminess of channel two on this amp. And I think that that's really overall what sets it apart the most from a standard three channel rectifier. But this wouldn't be a belligerent amateur demo if we didn't do a little drop tune hardcore riff. So that's what we're gonna do to send this one out. All right guys, last riff, we are in drop C. We are back on the red channel. I've got the electric eye mud killer boost on in front of this amp. If you don't know about that overdrive, you definitely should. I'll link down below in the description because it's one of my favorites for tightening up a big booty Judy amp like this one. <laughs> Thank you. 
messed up the end of that riff, but that's okay. That's gonna do it for me today, guys, on the Dual Rectifier Roadster. Revisited, if you guys have any experience with this amp, I'm curious to see what it is down below. So leave it down in the comments. Did you guys initially hate this amp and then come to love it like me? Have you always loved it? Have you always hated it? Whatever it is, put it down below in the comments. I'll make sure to meet you down there to talk about it if I can get through the sentence without stumbling over my words. If you like the video, do me a favor, hit that like button on the way out because it actually really does help. And if you're not subscribed, which I don't know why you wouldn't be, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you don't miss any more awesome amp demos like this. Thanks so much for watching guys. Kyle here again. We'll see you next time. You know what this wall is missing? Another amp. There we go.